Where is Antigua? Antigua is south of the Virgin Islands and it's about midway down the Caribbean chain on the way to Venezuela. Basically, if you think of the Caribbean as an L shape or upside down shape of seven, it's just on the corner. It appears to be like right in the middle of the Caribbean, you know? If the Caribbean was an arm, it's the elbow, I guess. <laughs> Antigua Race Week was something I was thought about doing and I thought it would be like this amazing thing to accomplish and it was just really incredible that we actually made it there and competed in Race Week. This season we sailed over 2,500 nautical miles to race Antigua Sailing Week, the Caribbean's longest running regatta and cited as one of the top regattas in the world. In over a hundred yachts we were the only all-female team. Let us tell you all about it. We're all going to die. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jocelyn. In 2019, I bought a 38-foot sailboat and filled it with my best friends. We named her the Bellafonte, and together, we're sailing the world proving that ordinary people can do extraordinary things. This is Sea Sondering. The four of us had never flown the spinnaker together, and we were in a spinnaker class, so we would have to fly the spinnaker every single race. So on our way to the harbor where the races come out of, we decided to fly the spinnaker for the first time. All of us were a bit terrified, you could say. It was pretty windy. It wasn't like a light wind day. It's only a few days uh, before race week starts, and we're going to fly the spinnaker for the very first time. So we're up on the bow here, bringing it up. Laura's doing a great job steering. And we're going to see this thing in action. Please pray for us. So while everyone was getting instructions and uh, lessons on how to fly the spinnaker, I was in the back of the boat not listening to anything. The bag of terror is about to be released, guys. Okay. Teaching everyone how to fly the spinnaker the, pretty much the day before the regatta started was a little intense. Rigging makes perfect sense. Steering, less so. Release. There. Hold on. I believe in everyone, and everyone knew kind of what was going on by at least the end of the week. <laughs> We had spent so much time and energy just making sure we got to Antigua on time with all of the boat fixes that we had to do that by the time we got there on our list of things to do was like, oh yeah, none of us know how to race a sailboat. <laughs> and then the day before the racing, you know, I thought it would be probably a good idea to teach the girls like what a race looks like. The lessons of learning were received while hungover incredibly and perhaps less than might have been needed. The first thing you should all be thinking about every time you leave the boat, Laura, eyes on me, is... Wind. <laughs> which way the wind is coming from. At all times of day, no matter where you are, you should know which way the winds are coming from. Okay. What if it's like a cyclone? So questions from the crowd. Um, <laughs> A regatta is made up of several races. In a typical sailing race, there's a start line and a course set up with floating markers. The start is a five minute countdown where all the boats plan on crossing the line right at go. Then everyone races around the set course to the finish line. Different boats have different handicaps based on their size and speed, so you don't always know what place you finish in until the results have been posted. Clear as mud? There was definitely more learning on the job than any other type of learning. <laughs> Our start stuff, guys. I have to start counting down. The beginning of race week, there's a lot of like 
energy, like pent up energy, a lot of anxiousness, eagerness to like kind of get out there and see what it's about. The biggest thing for me was the start line. The start line in a big ocean race like that is crazy. There's all these boats, some of them cost a million dollars plus, and we're there in our little rowboat, the Belafonte, and you're just letting your sails flap until the horn goes and you can cross the start line, and it's the air is electric. In, in, in. We only had a crew of five, so we all had lots of roles, but my main role was uh, grinding whenever we tacked. Um, me and Sarah would do the winch handles and we would tack um, and we would haul the lines. Laura and I had never even sailed before coming on the Belafonte, so to then all of a sudden be in an ocean regatta, which people like train all year to be in, was quite shocking. Lord, you know where the tack line is? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So she's got it on the ground. Yeah, tight. How does everyone feel for finishing their first race? We're definitely over You can do a whole circle. The most anticlimactic finish. <laughs> it was cool to see the change after uh, the first couple days. If I could describe the first day of racing, it'd be demoralizing. First race, came in last place. <laughs> so basically what race day looked like, there are about 20 hour days. You wanna get out on the water by 9 a.m. and the race starts around 10, 10.30. Sometimes it'd be beautiful, sunny, hot, and there were other days where we'd like hit squalls and there was like pouring rain on top of us for like 20 minutes. days where we were on the water for like eight hours because our boat goes slow and these races were like 16 nautical miles up and back. We're rounding the mark after three hours. The first mark, we rounded. Yeah, we're ready for a nap. Often we are coming in between like 3 and 5 p.m. and by that time the party's already started so you immediately go from spending the day racing to going to the awards like ceremony of the day and then they have like concert and events and all this stuff going on and then before you knew it it's 3 a.m. and it's time to go to bed because you have to wake up in five hours to go back out and race. Um, today we are racing for our third day. Very excited about that. Yesterday we came in seventh, which is up from last. Today, maybe sixth. Okay, so it's day three of races. Um, we're all a bit tired from racing so hard yesterday. It was a five and a half hour race yesterday. And so we're just leaving the harbor now. We're gonna try and throw the sails up in the harbor where the water's flat, because yesterday it was quite rolly out there. And uh, yeah, just power through today. We're to get a day off, so we got seventh yesterday. We're just trying to move up. That's fast. Yeah. Good job. Everyone at this race has been so kind to us and that's just been the whole way through our entire journey of sailing. You know, I think sailors in general are super, super generous and I don't know if it's because we're all living this sort of weird niche life and so we all understand that and it brings you together. But yeah, we just have like truly guardian angels, like not even just kind people but people like Sally and Ian who <laughs> like just are 
the best. Oh, privilege. Yeah, they're just, we're so lucky with how kind the sailing community is in general and is to us. grinding with Laura and we kind of each sort of took a side of the boat and depending on which tack we do we would do that role um, but I also took the role of the runner because I'm kind of like small and nimble like a minx or something I don't know whatever runs on the deck of a boat mouse maybe I was four deck which means that I was in charge of getting the spinnaker out of the bag and back into the bag so I didn't have to grind like Laura and Sarah but when my job came, it was the most intense experience perhaps of my life. And every time afterwards, I felt like I needed to lay down. <laughs> I did go up and help them with the spinnaker a couple times when it got tangled. Um, one time being that I almost flew overboard. Yeah, I got you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Sorry, Sally. Okay. I was behind in the face. What's he talking? I think it was caught on something. And it freed itself? And it might have freed itself. Okay. We had an incident where um, the sock that held our spinnaker, the line broke on it, and we had to sail it. We, we realized we were going to have to fly it without the sock, which I had never done and I was pretty terrified of. And I told Jocelyn I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to fly the spinnaker anymore. And she basically was like, I'm here. You have to do it, and I know you can do it. Someone look up for her. Almost, still going. Keep going.
excited. We're so close. Can't wait for a rough punch. We are excited to get back. I feel like today was the first time we kind of raced really, really well together and we raced like a professional. You guys are really close to shore. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. One right Look, there. I, God, I, my, literally my dips. fingerprint has been rubbed off. Oh yeah! Oh, you lost your identity. I've lost, lost my God. fingerprint. <laughs> it's like you work at a pineapple factory. one elderly gentleman we encountered and he said to us I thought I knew how to sail and then I raced a race and I don't think truer words have probably ever been spoken you start out thinking you know what you're doing and by the end of the week you realize you actually had no idea what you were doing but now that you've done it you kind of have some idea Every single day that we went out, we got so much better at racing together. We just got tighter and quicker and more efficient, and it was amazing to watch how good we got, honestly. <laughs> and the most amazing thing about racing like that with the spinnaker up is that when you're going downwind and you're going fast and the spinnaker is perfect, the boat is humming and it's, it's intoxicating. Each day we got better at turning out our course and sailing and the girls got better at tacking and, and we got better on the start line and it, it, like, it just felt so good to be constantly progressing. Like, it just it felt like a Disney movie which is like so corny but it did. We started out like pretty bad and by the end of the week we were moving like a well-oiled machine and everyone knew what they were doing and they were confident. Navigator. I didn't expect to learn as much as I did and I didn't expect to come out of it with like the amount of knowledge and confidence sailing that I do, do have now because of it. It just got better and better and those last couple days it was just euphoric going through the finish line and actually seeing boats still uh, in the race and yeah just seeing the improvement in our crew as well was just incredible. Come on this Sarah! Get us across the finish line! We're gonna make it! We're gonna make it! Antica Sailing Week is just all of us sailing into harbor. Uh, we're singing at the top of our lungs, just dancing on the boat like we always do, just because we felt so good about our race. 
for them to actually come into the harbor and seeing people clapping and cheering for us. I thought they were clapping for our dancing, but no, it was because the results had been posted and we had gotten first place. We just won our last and final race by 19 months. Really? This is our this is the our Caribbean trajectory. queen. We got we got 10th the first day, 9th, 5th, 8th, 5th, 1st, and we had no idea and we were just coming in chilling because of handicap. And then we walk in here and we've... We're, <laughs> well, people have said you won. No. How do you feel, Sally? Yeah. I am so impressed by you guys. Oh. You guys. Oh. You rock. We were really happy. It's a Disney moment. And Disney and moment. Yeah, like, this is what it's all about. Where oh. is Patrick? Where is Patrick? Where is that? <laughs> First place from Canada, Jocelyn McLaren and Ben Afonte! This is why we... They started in 10th, then got 8th, then got 5th, then got 3rd, and then got 1st. class and this is the reason we do daily prize giving. Yeah. Uh, I love it. Everyone. It means a lot to everyone. <laughs> it, it means a lot to me, really. <laughs> I want to thank the race committee for staying out with us on the water all day long. And all day long. Everyone, the organizers for putting this event on, it's amazing and everyone for coming out and sailing with us today. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well said. Winning anything is amazing, but winning something that you never thought you'd ever be doing in your life and that you also never thought you'd be able to win at <laughs> uh, is amazing. There was an award for best female crew and we actually won that at the end of the week. We got to go up on the big stage and receive that award and that was just a really big moment for all of us. It was really nice to be able to represent women and our team. one of the best weeks of my life, hands down, one of the best weeks of my life. Uh, I'm really happy that I got to be part of it. It was a huge learning curve, but I feel like we all rose to the challenge of it. And yeah, I would definitely be open to racing again. Antigua Race Week was incredible, and I would love to do it again. It was one of the best weeks of her life, allegedly. <laughs> We met someone in BVI's, Kelly from Victoria Royal Yacht Club, and he told us that race week was gonna be the best week of our lives. And I think he's probably pretty close to right. It was an experience that you can't really explain to anyone else unless they've been there, but it was like, it can't be beat. Definitely can't be topped. <laughs> Okay, rip away.